I'm a theater artist, and uh, that has meant being a, a writer and performer of my own shows, uh, mostly, mostly things I've written myself. Um, I have had as a vision for a long time uh, combining my interests in theater and composition. They're very different art forms in terms of how they're notated and the process of getting from the document to a performance. They're very different. And uh, this is an ongoing challenge and it fascinates me. Um, this is one of my most explicitly musical theatrical pieces. Um, I have some others that, that use some of these same techniques uh, and for a, an ensemble seeming to kind of freely follow a narrator. But I explored them much further with this piece. Sheep are this very inspiring thing in my life, as odd as that sounds. Uh, I lived in Scotland about eight years ago on a small island. It's called Mull, M-U-L-L. -L. It's on the west coast in the Hebrides Islands. And um, I worked in a small hotel. There were not a lot of people around. There were a lot of sheep. And I became a kind of sheep observer. Um, I did a lot of journal writing, and I have a lot of writing about sheep. And it's not just things about how they're funny, like there are entire stories of things I observed with sheep. And some of them are quite sad or, or dark or just inexplicably weird, and some of them are quite funny. Um, so for a really long time, even then, eight years ago, I, I've wanted to write a piece of music up with these writings at the core of them. It's almost like sheep were part of the process. It's almost like sheep got together and wrote the piece or performed the piece. So there's a, a sense of spontaneity and impulsiveness to the piece. I, I'm, I love animals and I, I'm very interested in, in what it would be like to be an animal. I feel that sheep are probably conscious in a way, but that they don't get all caught up in their intellectual heads the way we do. So um, I feel that if sheep were to write a piece of music, they wouldn't plan or think they would just do it. They would reduce the time between planning the piece and actually performing the piece. So I, I looked for all these ways to compose impulsively. Part of that is writing little computer uh, programs that would choose notes and rhythms for me so that I can just worry about the bigger gestures. Uh, and part of it is just writing really quickly and impulsively and then going back later and seeing what I have. So uh, this piece has a lot of different styles in it. Some of them are clearly evocative of, of uh, music you've heard before, but some of them are just bleh, just notes on the paper. And uh, that's sheep music, I guess. as the butt of a joke. 
Each sheep makes its own sound. They gather back into the bunch, fall into the line. I thought that only people counted sheep, and yes, they do, whether figuratively, as a sedative, or perhaps because they actually have some sheep they need to count. And count them why? Well, you see, these people count their sheep for reasons three. One, to be sure that they still have them all. Two, them off as each sheep is sheared or dipped. Three, to know how many sheep have been placed in the field so that the field does not become overgrazed. There may be other reasons to do with lambs, to do with markets. I don't really know. But people count. Nowadays, some farmers even mark their sheep with spray-painted numbers. I once saw a confused lamb number seven try to milk from you number six and receive some swift, blunt kicks. In reply, apparently sheep can count too. But sometimes farmers still count their sheep aloud in ancient ways, in dialects of those long dead and nearly forgotten, whose fingers surely added up to some number other than ten, whose bones became a sort of abacus. As they said it in Lincolnshire, yan, tan, tether up, tether up, pimp, sever up, leather up, hover up, cover up, dick, yan a dick, tan a dick, fer a dick, heather a dick, bum fit, Yana bum fit, Tana bum fit, Tether a bum fit, Pether a bum fit, Figget. But I have seen myself with mine own eyes a flock entering a field single file through the gate. moment due to de facto circumstance. 
So, when the first third of the line were in and had spread out and took their places eating on the grass, the next third went in. Until another random you made the call to stop. And the last third waited until their time had come. As they said it in Wensleydale, yea, tame, edero, pedero, pits, tater, later, overo, covero, disc, yain disc, tame disc, ero disc, pero disc, bumfit, bumfit yain, bumfit tame, bumfit edero, bumfit pedero, jigget. what the sheep do to count themselves, not in numbers, but in roughly hewn guesstimates. Too few, too many, just right, stop the line. This is how the sheep themselves make certain that the land will not be overgrazed, which you could say matters more to them than to the shepherds. As they said it in Rathmel, I'm Time, tether up, feather up, thumps, the other, the other, quagger, quagger, dubs, Ina dubs, Tina dubs, tether a dubs, feather a dubs, what? time fences affect sheep is when they panic <laughs>
Because...
animals are really good at finding places that we don't know exist. I notice this because I don't live with any animals. So when a friend stayed with me and brought her cat along, I noticed how good the cat was at finding places to be. Under the bottom step, behind the potted tree, between the couch and the window, where all those internet cables are lying around. But then it took me a year to notice that my bathtub is next to my bed and my stove is right beside my toilet just because some thin walls block the view. An animal would know it right away. A sheep would definitely know it. Sheep are also good at finding places that we don't think of as places. To me, you see, a rocky outcrop two-thirds of the way up a bracken-covered ridge is not a place. To a sheep, it is. And I have followed these trails, thinking that they might lead to places that I might like to go. Trails go to places, you know. But then the trail that I was on seemed to be trying to lose me by making me climb up along steep ledges that two feet can barely manage. But four hooves could walk with ease even in the fog. Sheep trails. I never found out where they led. It looked like nowhere, though. Nowhere I could see. And if I could see, Nowhere I would want to go. I saw one with its hind legs caught in a piece of its own wool, reacting in the worst way possible by challenging every single other sheep in the field. It goes something like this. They meet head to head. A pause. One sudden headbutt. A briefer pause. And then the loser springs away sideways. How do they know who won? Had this sheep, the challenger, won or lost? When she ran off in a blind rage, out through an open gate, unspoken boundary and had been asked on behalf of the community to leave, to go off and die in solitude and in shame. Afterward, I felt kind of haunted by what I had seen. 
It seemed somehow painfully familiar, like there's some sort of message in it for me. For do I not also make others suffer for my burden? I thought that only humans left records of themselves, but then I found a tiny cave by the sea. To enter it, you had to scramble in among the boulders. And in this cave, a sheep had come to die alone. It left a skull, bones, some tufts of wool, and a question, why this cave? Why alone? I thought that only we left records of ourselves, but that sheep made a choice. That cave was a choice, and that choice left a record, left by a sheep for me, and me alone to find. 